I love to think about all of our wine club members opening their boxes at home as soon as the shipment comes. Um, so I have one here, and I'd like to show you what's in it, what you'll be getting every month. So when you first open your box, you're, gonna, you're going to run into an envelope. And in that envelope will be some pieces. So on the outside, you can see there's a letter. And I write this letter to you every month. And this is where, if I were you, I would start. Before you even look at the wines, um, read the letter where, and let me introduce these wines to you and tell you why we're so excited about them being part of the Sunset Wine Club. Next, you're going to come across some cards. On the front side of these cards will be tasting notes about each of the wines that, that's in the box. And then on the back of the card is a story about the winery. And that story might include um, the history of the winemaker, how he or she got into this. It might include information about the region and why it produces such a good Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc or, or Merlot or whatever might be in that um, box. Then you will also, for each of the wines, get a recipe card. And um, I'll be telling you about that in just a little bit. Um, we actually pair these wines with recipes from our test kitchen. Um, but by this time, you'll be wanting to get to the wines. So let's see what we have in this shipment. We have two reds this time around. One of them is Goose Ridge's G3. This one is from the Columbia Valley up in Washington State. Um, it's, it's just a booming part of the West's um, uh, wine growing. And we love to bring Washington wines to you. The other wine in this shipment happens to be called Educated Guess. This one is from the Napa Valley. And it's the kind of wine that sort of makes you raise your eyebrows and go, what? And we'll tell you all about it in the shipment with, with the material that you get. So there are great stories behind this wine. With the recipe cards, I wanted to get back to those. Um, we have a lot of fun with these um, in the office here at Sunset. Once we've chosen wines for the club, we've, we've given them a thumbs up. Then we bring sample bottles here in the test kitchen, where I am right now, and I go back through our archives of tested recipes, recipes that we've printed some, sometime in the past, and I look at my notes about the wine, and I think, what flavors would be really good with this wine? And I pick out four or five different dishes that I think would be likely candidates and I try to vary it with different ethnic flavors, with some comfort food, with something that might be a little more exotic. And our retesters here in the kitchen cook all of those dishes, and then we have a group of editors from down the hall, and they are not all food and wine people. They're travel editors, they're garden editors, but they love food and wine. And they've agreed to be our official panel, and I call them and I say, the pairing's ready for that Zinfandel. Come down and taste the food. And then they vote on their favorite pairings. And that is actually what we send to you. We've tasted it, we've cooked it, we've had it with the wine. And what I hope that you will do is similar. Don't do this alone at home. This is meant to be shared. So what I really hope you do is call your best friends to come over and eat and drink this food and wine um, next weekend after you get the shipment. You know, the process of opening a bottle can look a little bit scary and cumbersome, but it's, it's really very simple. You take the knife part of your corkscrew, run it around the base below the ridge, and cut that foil, then start working the foil up, and very soon, the whole top pops off for you. Then pop that closed and pull open the corkscrew. And if you angle it in and then straighten it up, just screw it right down the middle. 
This particular corkscrew happens to be double action with a double hinge, so you can pull up once and then almost get it out and then you can just pull it out like that. Give it a pour. Um, actually, to give it enough room, you don't wanna, want to fill your glass too much. And the swirling part is really not just an attempt to be pretentious here. There's a reason to swirl your wine. And you can do it in the air, just give it a good swirl, or you can put it on a surface and give it a swirl. Um, and the reason is to give it as much air surf, um, surface to air space as you can and release those molecules and then stick your nose all the way down in it and give some short quick sniffs and that's when you'll get the most aroma out of your wine and that is more than 50 percent of what your wine is going to give you um, if you can't smell it you're not going to taste very much and this one is it has beautiful dark cherries and plums and cassis with chocolate. Um, I'd love to share it with you.